What's up everybody? Thrillbilly here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, we're going to discuss a new rig I got. We got on Facebook Marketplace and I found a really, really, really small dealer uh, in our hometown here. I was able to go take a look at it, take it for a test drive, and it has nine seats. And the price was perfect, so we decided to go with that. So without further ado, let's take a look around at our new to us 2003 Ford Expedition four-wheel drive XLT 4.6 liter V8. Well, there we have it. Here is our new rig. It's a 2003 Ford Expedition XLT. This does have the four-wheel drive on it. It's got the third row seating in it. And most importantly, it does have seating capacity for nine um, it is pretty much a base model. It's really not a whole lot to this thing. Um, it does have the standard cloth interior. Um, and she does have a lot of miles on her. She's been well used. She's in pretty decent shape. She's got some issues here and there. Mainly, uh, this particular vehicle has got uh, different tires on it. Each each wheel has a different tire on it. Well, I take that back. The back two tires are the same brand and whatnot, but this up here, the front two tires are completely different. This is the uh, Achilles Desert Hawk. Sounds great. Anyway, let's take a look on the inside of this thing. So here's the interior. She's silver just like the Mandalorian over there. Um, does have the power seats, I'm interested in that. That's pretty fascinating. Does not have a console on this vehicle, but I don't care about that. Most of these have the center console. This allows us to have a ninth seat here. So as you can see, we got one car seat in here already. But what really got me about this particular vehicle as we were looking at it is it is in really nice shape on the interior for the age a lot of these things are like a lot of these uh big suvs get treated like the minivans you know there's the people people haulers and you got uh typically you'll have like suckers and crayons and uh, cheerios and all that kind of stuff just jammed into the carpet of these things but this is actually looking pretty decent in here as far as the upholstery and the carpets and everything. So I don't know who who took care of this vehicle, but they did a pretty good job with uh, keeping it nice. There's no crayon marks or pencil marks or pen marks or holes or anything in the headliner. So it's actually in pretty decent shape. So pretty happy with it. Um, like I said, this is pretty much just a stripped down model. Really not a lot of bells and whistles to that. Uh, this particular one uh, got a little bit of the seat cushion that's worn down but the bolsters are still in pretty good shape uh, really nothing torn or ripped or anything like that in here it's actually really impressed with how well this has been kept um, this vehicle does have a lot of miles on it um, it's got 166,000 miles on it currently um, just doing a VIN search on it it's kind of been bouncing around to few different dealerships and auctions and stuff like that over the last oh I don't know four or five years so um, last time this thing was showed up on the VIN and my VIN search thing that I did was 2017 and it had about 166,000 miles on it so this thing really hasn't been used much in the last few years so um, like I said it's not perfect it does have its does have some issues with it here and there. I'll get to those in just a second. I have one center cap. Great. Um, it does have the third row seats, which was what we were looking for. It does have the uh, bumper hitch, uh, the trailer hitch, and it does have the correct wiring that we need for towing. Um, like I said, it's pretty clean. I, I do plan on giving it a once over with the vacuum cleaner, some upholstery cleaner in some spots. But uh, like I said, it is really just not a whole lot's really gonna be needed for it. 
So here, let's get to some of the goodies. One of the goodies is, you know, it's got the factory radio in it. I don't know if the CD player works or not. I haven't even tested it. But it has an aftermarket Pioneer six disc CD changer, which is retro, pretty old school. There she is underneath the passenger seat. I have no idea if it works. I don't really care, but pretty straightforward on this. Um, just standard mechanical controls for AC and uh, heater and all that kind of stuff. Got your accessory plugins down there. Um, got the delete on a lot of these extra options or whatever. Now here comes the, the issue that we've got with the, with the vehicle. When I took it for a test drive, pretty much everything works. Cruise control works, um, overdrive, all that good stuff. But I tried to engage the four wheel drive and the light came on the dash and then it just blinked, which tells me that's an indicator of that there's a problem. So I did a little bit of research and found that it could be anything from the switch to the electrical harness to the motor on the transfer case. So I'm gonna dig into that a little bit deeper. I hopefully I don't have to worry about four wheel drive until the winter months. Uh, we do tend to get some some snow down down here in this area, but I'm not too worried about it. And now that we're there's some spots here we need to clean, but not terrible. And while I took it for a test drive, um, if I wanted to see if the heat worked on it, so I switched her all the way over to heat and then I got that notorious clicking sound in the dash. So the actuator, the, the blend motor was going bad on it. So I went to pick it up this morning to you know, pay for it, and do all the paperwork. And when we get there, the, the guys that own the, the little dealership, nice fellas, they had this apart and they were changing that actuator door for me uh, before I took possession of it. I wasn't expecting them to do that. Um, very glad that they did because it's not a hard job. It's just, you know, uh, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. So they took care of that for me. I was really happy for it. Cassette. Ooh, just now noticed that. Sweet. I don't even know if I even have any cassettes anymore. Got to see if that thing works. If it does, we're in business. Um, yeah, it still has the uh, owner's manual for it. That's nice. It does have uh, the keyless entry keypad over there. I tried pushing the button. Uh, there's a little card in here that has a four digit code on it. I put that code in and it didn't do anything. But on the Ford rigs, you can hit the last two buttons on the keypad and that'll automatically lock the doors for you as you're walking away. You just push the buttons and it locks the doors, which is a nice feature. I pushed those last two and it did lock the door. So that tells me that the system does function I just got to figure out what the digits are to get that to, to work properly. So that's that's really just the options on this thing. There really isn't anything to this. It's really simple. And I'm glad because it just kind of put this into a price range where we can, we can afford it. As it sits, what this truck needs is, I got to figure out what's wrong with the four wheel drive system on it. Uh, that's not really wanting to, to engage. So I need to find out if it's just a wiring problem or if it's a motor on the transfer case. Second thing is, this thing needs tires. Um, the two front tires are two different brands compared to the back two tires. So it's got three different brands of tires on this thing. Uh, the front tires are, I think, if I date coded it correctly, are from 2016 and 2017. So this being 2021, they're old. And the back tires, I think, are older than the front tires, which kind of makes sense given the look of the tread that's left on. So I'm searching around for some new tires for this thing. Um, I think I'm going to try to see if I can find a wheel and tire combo and just upgrade. I don't hate the steel wheels on this, but I'm, gonna, I'm wanting to find some aluminum wheels for this to try to save some weight, you know, just save on it a little bit. I do plan on upgrading the brakes on this thing uh, because I am going to be towing my camper with it. I'm going to go for a heavy duty brake kit on it. And I'm going to add a brake controller for the trailer brakes on our, on our camper as well. The only other major issue that this vehicle has, um, it does have some weight reduction on it that I need to address. So let's check that out. All right, here's what I'm talking about on the weight reduction. These things are pretty common. You can already tell that previous people, I don't think the people that own the dealership did this, but previous owners have spray painted the bottom plastic cladding. They spray painted it and didn't do a very good job of masking off, but uh, they spray painted it because, as you all know, 
these plastic things just fade to a light gray. They don't stay dark very long. Uh, it does have some aftermarket running boards on it, which is nice. I like that. Uh, but here's that weight reduction I'm talking about. These rocker panels on this on this rig are not looking too good. And the frame has got quite a bit of scale on it and I'm gonna have to deal with. Um, I did kind of look through the frame as I was underneath the vehicle and I didn't really notice any cracks in any frames or anything like that. Nothing has been rusted through. It's just a lot of surface rust on the frame. So here's the passenger side. You just kind of get a look at what we got going on here. What I plan on doing is just either cutting this back or sanding it back to get to a, a decent amount of fresh metal and then I'm going to put some rust converter on it and just just let it be what it is. It's got a lot of miles on this thing. I'm not looking for a, you know, a pristine vehicle. I, I, I just need it to be used. You know, I just need to be able to use it and make a good utility vehicle out of it. If I can make it look nice, great. If not, I'm not too worried about it. So the, the, this is the passenger rocker. It does have a little bit of some rust on the roof. I'm gonna have to kind of get at that a little bit. Again, I'm not too terribly worried about this. Um, I don't even know how long this vehicle is even going to last. We got it for cheap enough. Just as long as I can haul some kiddos around it safely, um, I'm going to be happy with that. So here's the underside. Kind of showing you some of the, the scale and the rust. This is kind of looking a little bit like the Danonator Silver Rusto. Just got some scale that I'm going to have to knock off and then... I plan on throwing some rust converter on it just to try to save on it a little bit, keep it from getting terrible. So that was the passenger side rust. Here's the driver's side. It's a lot worse. Um, it's completely ate away the rocker panel into a giant hole over here. So I got little kiddos coming in and out of this. I really don't want them catching their little toes on there and getting, getting uh, you know, rust embedded into their flesh. So I'm gonna work on getting that fixed up best that I know how and again here's the here's the rust on the driver's side it's pretty much completely gone over here so again I'm just gonna try to hit this with a, a cheap poker and just try to knock all the scale off of it and get it back to something decent and then convert it so uh, to keep it from rusting really any further it's obviously just on the body um, there is some things on the frame I'm gonna have to kind of knock down and try to clean up a little bit um, but nothing too serious and again this is really just meant to be a secondary kind of a vehicle this is not going to be a daily driver so just need it to be utilitarian uh, just kind of looking in here you can just see things are just a little bit a little bit kind of scaly from just corrosion let's pop the uh pop the horse barn up here and see what kind of horses we got in here It's the Triton 4.6. Uh, what was nice is the fellows that worked on this car or worked on this truck, they put new coil packs and new spark plugs on it. So they told me that when they got it, it, it was not running. Um, they put new coil packs and spark, uh, spark plugs in it. Uh, they also had to replace. Um, as you can see by the underside of the vehicle, there's quite a bit of rust. Uh, they had to replace the brake line or two underneath the vehicle. <clears throat> and while they were at it, they even replaced they even replaced the catalytic converters. So this thing's got two brand new catalytic converters on it. They've changed out a brake line and they put new spark plugs and coal packs on it. And they also replaced that uh, blend door underneath the dash. So that was nice. That kind of made made the decision to buy, the, buy this a little bit easier because they've replaced some of these night, the consumable parts on it already for me. So here's some of that rust there. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But you can see some just a uh, little bit of scale on some of the frame. I'm gonna shoot this with a wire wheel and just I bought some rust converter and. Then, just gonna clean her up. It's not terrible, but worst part about it are these rocker panels. You can just see the rust on these rocker panels. 
So I don't know if they sell patch kits for this or, or what, but I'm gonna look into seeing what I could do to kind of do more of a long-term fix on there. So when I was underneath here, car was the truck was sitting for quite a while at the dealership just running I wanted to see if it would overheat or anything did not drop a single drip of oil it does have oil in it that was another thought of mine it wasn't wasn't dropping any oil on the ground maybe there's no oil in it but another good thing is is when they put the brake line on it blood the system so it's got pretty much fresh clean brand new brake fluid in it which is great So that's the walk around. Um, really not much to this truck. Like I said, it's pretty much a stripped down model. It does have cruise control. Nice. Um, and power pedals, like you can move the pedals forward and backward. That's gonna be helpful for my short wife. So what I need to do most of this vehicle to kind of put my mind at ease about hauling all the kids in the camper is getting the brakes upgraded, getting new tires for it for sure. Um, I do wanna be able to get the four wheel drive fixed, but that's gonna be down the road. Um, put some comments down in the comment section if you happen to know what any common issues are for these expeditions, if they have you know something simple that I can be looking forward to fix. Um, other than that, it does blow cold AC. The air, air conditioning does still does work on this vehicle, which is a plus. Power mirrors, nice got more options on it than I thought it did one more thing I forgot to tell you on this vehicle it does have a little bit of a wrinkle in that door not a big deal kind of matches the wrinkle that's in the side of our van that we've got but the other thing is someone has decided to key this vehicle at some point and the scratches are now turning into some surface rust so a little bit there a little bit there starting to bubble the paint a little bit so wasn't too happy about that but then again that kind of helped lower the price for me um, so this is definitely the worst side of the body panels as far as the appearance of the vehicle is concerned um, there is a little bit of corrosion there on the back tailgate Little bubble there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, that doesn't look like rust. It just looks like aluminum corrosion or something like that. I don't know if these tailgates are made out of aluminum or not, but she's the XLT package. Um, those scratches on that side and a little bit of corrosion on the tailgate are really the only corrosion that's on the outside. Uh, a little bit of a ding there, but surprisingly, this thing is in really decent shape, especially for the age um, and what we paid for it. That's really about the only damage on the vehicle is a little bit of a scratch there on the bumper. Um, headlamps are a little bit foggy, but that could be probably be sanded out. Uh, and the wheels just have some scuffs and some different things on them. But again, the passenger side is really kind of the uglier, ugliest side of it. And someone has shot some screws in there to keep that baby on. I'm gonna see if I can find a way to either replace that or do some junkyard hopping or something. Got about three or four screws in it, but for what we paid for it, for what we're gonna use it for, just really seemed like kind of a good deal at the right time for our family, so.